Up first, we have got match 101 for the people who can see the ladder in Avalon. So this is Villain and Castellan versus Safion and Xerox. They have gone for Condor and Arbitrator versus an Incursus and Vexer. The matches will each last five minutes, and this obviously everyone dies. The arena is a hundred kilometers across from Effie, they're a 200 kilometer radius on diameter. Fairly similar rules to Alliance Tournament, just minus points. So we're going to have blue teams and red teams on the overview to make life easy. Savion and Xerox are on the red team and Villain and Castellan are on the blue team. Bear with me while I open more cider and perhaps set up my overview so I can actually see who's blue and who's red. So Effie is the central point of the arena in Avarga. He has a 101 kilometer lock range, so if, the, if at any point the Varga loses a lock on anybody, that means they've left the arena and they're disqualified. So the frigates are obviously the ones taking the damage first. We'll try and get them off the field as quickly as possible. Most of the ships moving over a thousand kilometers a second, apart from Castellan's Arbitrator, which seems to have an afterburner fit. We all know our fits, I just can't remember them. Um, Condor's taken a lot more damage than the Tristan so far. I'm guessing because the Stabber can keep up with the Condor a lot more. With the um, Castellan's Arbitrator having the um, slower speed, this means he likely can't keep up with the um, Tristan as well. <coughs> So three minutes left on the clock and still actually not got a ship down. Looks like the red team has switched to the arbitrator to try and get some damage on them. That said, the Condor's still taking damage. Oh, Tristan's just taking the big hit. That Condor looks like it's going to go down. And if that goes down, oh no, now the Tristan's at the, the same level. So. So that's both of the um, frigates down now, and it's just left to the Stabber versus Arbitrator. The Arbitrator already has some damage to its shield, so this will be interesting. 
the stabber though is going to be able to keep range a lot better than the arbitrator but the arbitrator as you can see there is putting them um a lot of damps on that stabber i'm um, sorry newts However, the arbitrator does have um, its drones on the stabber as well. Tech 2 hammer hits. And they should be doing a lot more damage. The arbitrator's barely taken any. Stabber should have auto cannons on that thing, so shouldn't need cap to fire. And the st stabber's down, and that means the arbitrator wins. Congratulations to the blue team, which was Castellan and Villain. So they'll move forwards, and that will leave um, Daffion and Xerox to play in the losers bracket. So everybody will get, you know, at least two games. All right, so welcome back to match two. Forg forgive the um, stream constantly restarting, but you know. We we're trying to add our fancy advert to the stream, and apparently it's really hard. Um, I guess this is why CCP kind of can't be asked to broadcast the Alliance tournament really anymore. But whatever. Right. So here we have Draft and Rico on the red team, with Reston Wizard and Relenrak on the blue team. Draft and Rico are in. I can't have this many tabs open. Draft and Rico are in Incursus and Vexa. And Reston and Renorak are in a Merlin and a Caracal. Some tiny technical glitches while one of our members literally breaks every bit of IT they even look at. Don't even know how he does it, but <laughs> whatever. All I'm going to say is fuck the wiki. Uh, it's waiting for the teams to land and get organised. Again, same as last time. It'll be a five minute match. All our matches have got the same format where it's a cruiser and a frigate. Um, for those of you not in Avalon and might be watching, they had to our teams had to pick the ships to start with they um once they pick the ships beforehand then they cannot change them so if you picked a caracal at the start you will be in a caracal for the entire tournament thought this might be an interesting mix-up <laughs> so they're on grid and the timer starts five minutes on the clock as I said, we've got Reston and Renorak. So Renorak has chosen to warp in at range at 30 kilometers. The rest of them have all warped in at zero. That incurs is straight off the bat, taking a whole ton of damage on the red team. Reston Wizard on the blue team, taking some damage, but that incurs Incursus is repping though. Merlin slowly taking damage. The Merlin's obviously going to be shield tank, whereas in Curses is armor tank. Rico apparently has auto lock on um, target back turned on. So we'll see if he accidentally starts shooting me. Rico in the Vex are taking a lot of damage there suddenly. It's interesting, that, well, not splitting the fire, they've changed their focus. So Blue Team are now shooting the cruiser. If you can get that Vex off the field straight away, that's going to really help. Especially as that Vex can do a lot of damage. Vexa in. Ooh, Vexa's very close to dying already. Merlin on the blue team, for example, still not taking much damage though. Their team's got a split of fire focus on them. They've got the Incursus taking damage and the Vexa. Vexa's into structure now while the Incursus is tanking. Tanking just about in armor. Venomrax Caracal on the blue team taking a little bit of damage. Vexa's in structure, but it's holding in there. 
the Merlin on the blue team's into armor now, and that's going to go down very fast. Hitting structure, half structure, and once that down, that means that red team's ahead, although the Vexor is in structure still. Merlin's holding, holding on. That Vexor's not taking much damage in a while. Renorax Karak on the blue team's in half shield as well. The incursus for the red team is now gone. And that Vexor is now in half hull. However, looking at the fits and everything, the Vexor is hull tanked. This is something we've been doing on some roams as well, hull tanking our ships because it's fun. And there goes the Caracal on the blue... Nope, Caracal's still there, sorry. It's just gone out of lock range for me. He's only 20 kilometers from the arena edge, so it'll be interesting if we get a boundary violation. Unfortunately, we don't have some magical script to automatically blow up their ship, though. Although, Effie's in a Vargo in Bastion mode, so that's just a good, I guess. So that Vexor is holding on there, as he is a hull tanked. Western Wizard's Merlin still going, though. Taking some of its shield back. And don't forget that Caracal is still there as well. Oh, the Wolf's still here. The Incursus is still here. Sorry, I'm fucking terrible. I'm trying to... Might have asked too much. So the Incursus has got all of its armour back, whereas that Vexor, its hull is being um, slowly whittled away. And there goes the Caracal. Caracal is now gone. Leaving on the blue team, just that Merlin. The draft is 90 kilometers from the center. Oh, he's coming back in now. He's getting close to the edge there. So that Vex is still, still going. It's one heck of a tank. And there goes the blue team. That means the red team has won. Took a while for that Merlin to die. I guess and he was just running away. Which, you know, fair enough. So congratulations to the red team, which is Rico and Draft. With 30 seconds left on the clock. Referee reckons that draft draft ray might have left grid in his incursus. So we'll um we'll debate that one and um debate who actually won. As it currently stands, red team won, but we will debate. However, even if draft did leave the grid, still leave some um, Rico's Vexer alive, so red team would still win. So unless we decide otherwise, red team have won mm. and they move forward to yep. Yeah. Yeah, they are at referee's agreement, so red team win and they move forward to um, the next stage. Whereas that leaves the blue team, um, Western Wizard and Venomrak, they move down to the loser's bracket, but they will still get another another go. It's not really a loser's bracket, because they still chance, stand a chance to win. And on that note, we'll go back to another break and um, get back to you for the next match as soon as possible. Hopefully it won't be as long as last time. Right, so welcome back for the third match. Looking on the ladder, this is... Okay, you can't really see that on stream. But this is um, the match um, 201. <laughs> um, so this is Kester and John on the blue team versus Villain and, Kest and Castellan on the red team. It might not seem like we're organised, but 
to be honest, we are trying to organise a tournament with a proper stream and stuff, and you should see that our team speaks it up at the moment. It is a bit crazy. I mean, CCP have given up trying to broadcast the Alliance tournament, so, you know, give us some credit. <laughs> So, here we go. Once they land, the timer starts. Five minutes on the clock. Right, this time I can actually keep them locked, so I won't start saying people are dead when they're not. So that's a condor on the blue on the red team taking damage straight away there. Half shields already. Whereas the blue team is taking no damage. Oh, the, now the Tristan's got a little bit of damage going on. But that condor is condor's down already for the red team. So red team's just got the arbitrator left. That Tristan though is also going down pretty fast. Most of his armor already gone into structure. So that would be the rapid light missile launches on that caracal, just completely destroying the frigate for the, on the red team. Well, that Tristan is it's now it's got most of his armor back. He is tanking that. After the initial aggro, now that he's managed to pull range and re reduce that um income in damage, he has got his armor 100% back again. The arbitrator on the red team taking lots of damage. His shield's now gone. Oh, it's obviously going to be armor tanked or hold tank. No, it is armor tanked. Um, Caracal taking a little bit of damage there. With um, the drones, the drones from the arbitrator on that Caracal. Hammerheads, I assume. Yep, take two hammerheads from the arbitrator on that Caracal. It's going to hurt. That Caracal, shield bit Caracal, obviously. All into. Um, we put a shield now. That arbitrator though is also taking a lot of damage there. If that arbitrator can tank just long enough to take that caracal down, then it could st could win because the Tristan would struggle. Caracal, it lost all its um, it's into structure, but so is the arbitrator. This is going to be very close. Getting a bit. The Tristan is getting close to the boundary. And that Caracal, Caracal is down. Which now leaves the red team with the Arbitrator Cruiser and the blue team with the Frigate Tristan. Now that Arbitrator is very low structure, half structure. So that Tristan could take him down. And the Arbitrator is putting its Tech 2 Warriors onto that Tristan. So those Warriors will be able to keep up with that Tristan and hurt a lot. However, that Arbitrator has taken a lot of damage from the drones from the Tristan. That Tristan has got Tech 2 Acolytes on it. Cool. Haven't seen those in a while. That Tristan, though, or oh, he's tanking, he's managed to pull back a lot of his armor there. The damage on the Arbitrator is just not going to cut it for how fast his Tristan is going down now that those Warriors are on it. Two minutes on the clock, but we're not going to need that time. That Tristan, it's like it's over overheating its reps to, to stay alive this long. But the damage on the arbitrator is just so small. I said the arbitrator's 80 clicks. No, okay, the arbitrator's coming back into the arena, so it's not going to boundary file it. No, it's just a, a matter of how long can that Tristan survive. Arbitrator doesn't look like it's taken any damage in a while now. It's actually getting its shields back, so... And there goes the Tristan on the blue team, which means red team win. Very close to losing, but they did make it with one minute on the clock. Red team win. Which means Castellan and Villain win the second match. Nope, what the fuck? Um, yeah, win the second match and they're through to the next stage. Kester and John go through into the losers bracket and they will be fighting Reston Wizard and Renorak. You'll see the ladder on the stream shortly. They are already there. Magic.
does take a little bit of time for the ladder to update, but you know, gives a chance. What you can see um, on the stream is our internal tool we have built for Avalon. It's a bespoke tool um, one of our members has written to um, have all our crap really on there and stuff like this tournament ladder. It's all restricted for court members only, etc. Right, so that's it for this match. Um, congratulations to Castellan and um, Philane again. And we'll be back with the next match as soon as possible. So this is the next match. We've got Draff and Rico on the blue team, and level two guy and Khaleesi on the red team. I've also got Xerox here joining me commentating this time. So we'll see how that works. Woo. So the clock's now started, five minutes going. So both the teams have got incursors as their frigate of choice. Those things have a mean rep on them, so I don't expect Draft to go down immediately here. Both All the frigates have been damaged straight away. <laughs> Xerox is down regretting saying anything. No, oh no, they, they, as you say, this. Whereas level 2 guy's tank is oh, non-existent. Is dropped. The level uh, 2 guy is out. Giraffe is tanking like a bitch. They have yeah. got dual split reps. fire. The, um, is the dual Vector rep. is also taken. And yeah, so you've got the dual ref on the Incursors and you've got the Vector also taking damage, so... Yeah, but as we've seen from the previous match, that Vector can take a lot of punishment and it's not even near structure yet. Is that the whole tank defense the again then? Yep, these are yeah. the whole tank defenses. This is cursor, so it's fucking hero <laughs> tank in here. Yeah. The caracal for Khaleesi on the red team there. Lo losing the shield is pretty fast. Obviously, shield tanked. Yep. Is it oh, shield boost or died. buffer? No, they're both That's... buffered, so he's looking to dying here. Yeah, so Khaleesi going down pretty fast. That will be the Vex's bonus um, hammerheads on her. Those hammerheads are going to hurt a lot. Yeah, webs as well, and blasters. Khaleesi got in close, too close to that Vexer, I think. Yeah, so because the Caracal got too close to that Vexer, it's just completely caught straight away. And then the blasters combined with those bonus hammerheads, just, and they've gone. That's it. Rico and Draft take the game. That incursor slow. So, Hero to be tank. fair. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, credit to the red team, though, they did manage to take down that fucking crazy tank and curse I mean, they did kill something. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was done in two, well, two minutes. <laughs> two minutes and that was over. I mean, we are obviously small teams, but yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so that goes there. to the blue team. So that is Draft and Rico through to the next match where they will be playing Villain and Castellan. And that means... Uh, level 2 guy and Khaleesi go down to play Safion and Xerox in the losers bracket. Hey, I get to play again. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we'll be back as soon as we can be. We'll try and get these rolling a lot quicker now. Right, welcome back. Here is our next match on the ladder. This will be match um, 111, which is Safion and Xerox on the blue team versus level two guy and Khaleesi on the red team. Again, like all the other matches, they'll be using the same ships. So we're just waiting for them to land 
land at their respective bounces. So what we're doing is they all land at their bounces. Once they're at the bounces, we'll switch the stream over to the um, Eve client. Just waiting for two more people. So one thing which if if you can just switch the stream to the Eve client, hide the ladder. Yes. <laughs> right, so as I said, we've got Xerox and Safion on the blue team with level two guy and Khaleesi on the red team. The stream will display in a minute. There we go. Five minutes on the clock has started. So the Caracol and Khaleesi already taken a lot of damage. Seems like the blue team is focusing on the cruiser to start with instead of the frigate. Probably after they realise just how crazy tank these incursuses are. Uh, Xerox on the blue team though in the Tristan, already in half armour. But it is active repped, as you can probably see. Hey, okay, wake um, up. Yeah, you can see now. Um, Khaleesi's Caracol, which is a shield buffer tank fit, already into three quarter shield. Whereas the stab on the blue team not taking any damage yet, so they focus on that Tristan. Though, so, Khaleesi's Caracol on the red team, already into armour, gonna hit structure any second now. The Tristan from the blue team are also taking damage. But if that Caracol goes down, that leaves the Incursus to. And the blue team have lost their frigate. However, red team are going to lose their cruiser soon. And that will leave an Incursus versus a Stabber, which could be interesting. And there goes that Caracal. So it's now blue team Stabber versus red team's Incursus. This is Safion in the Stabber versus level 2 guy in the Incursus. And there goes the damage onto the Incursus. That's going to start hurting pretty fast from that Stabber unless you can run away. That Incursus has got five Hobgoblin 2s on it, so it's going to struggle to get away from that. It does have, have crazy tanks, you can see. Whoa, but that Stabber with its guns, its auto cannons, is fitted combined with the Hobgoblins, and that's just completely destroyed it. Blue team go through. Daffion and Xerox on the blue team go through to the next round in the loser's bracket. With that Stabber taking barely any damage. So congratulations to the blue team, commiserations to the red team. I believe if I understand ladders correctly, that means that the um, red team is now out. That means level 2 guy and Khaleesi are now out of the tournament, unfortunately. And Safion and Xerox move forwards. Right, and here we go with the next match. So here we have got, this is the second match in the losers bracket which is on the blue team, a Western Wizard and Relenrak, and on the red team, Kester and Jonathan. <laughs> He's called John, he doesn't like Jonathan. I am also here as Gen. You can hear the stream in the background coming from Xerox. <laughs> oh, that's my bad. There we go, that's fixed. I'm right, busy... just waiting for two more. I was busy reminding myself up. on the bits of these ships, just so someone actually knows what they are. Yep, so Xerox here is the person who actually fitted most of the ships. Um, Effie came up with them and Xerox um, fitted them all up, and I decided that I was going to get involved in the tournament this evening. So, yeah. Should...
Right. Gonna be, so it's going to be an interesting fight here because it's a rapid light caracal versus a heavy missile caracal. We're going to see if those reloads kill it. If we even last long enough to get a reload. That last match was <laughs> over pretty fast. That is true. Why do I see three blues on here? Oh, you, Xerox. Ah. <laughs> I haven't played even a while, so you have to bear with me. Um, right. Feel free to commentate while I um, figure out how to lock people <laughs> in the game. Oh, John's immediately taken half his shields. There we go, so yeah, Jonathan's Tristan is taking a lot of punishment straight off the bat there. Blue team's Merlin is also taking some damage, but nowhere near as much as the Tristan on the red team. Yeah, I believe it's only heavy missiles hitting that Merlin where it's the rapid lights hitting that Tristan, but that Tristan can tank quite a bit. It has an ancillary... Oh, oh no. not enough though. Caught the edge of the red there. team's just got the count. One count. That Merlin though is also. Oh, and Merlin's down. gone. So it's Caracal that... versus Caracal. Yeah, rapid light versus heavies. Although Wellnrack is starting to pull range quite a bit here. In Don't fact, forget the arena uh, is 100 kilometers. I'm not mistaken. I think someone's out of range of light missiles here. Uh, is Wellnrack the one with the heavy missiles? I'm actually just having to remind myself of who has what fit. Hey, you can just look at the ships. That's an easier way to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a bit of professional commentating going on here, but like I bloody know the difference between the launches. <laughs> uh, Wellnrack has heavy missiles, where Kester has rapid lights. So, in theory, Wellnrack should have this. But we'll see how theory translates as... to paper. So what's the range on your rapid light? It's about 33 kilometers, 34 kilometers, depending on Something skills? about that, and um, heavy missiles have about 70, so I'm curious as to why Wellenrak is orbiting so close to Kester here. Wellenrak should so... really be pulling range and thus using that thing. Three minutes on the clock, but it looks like it will be over way before then to see both these ships above the tank. So in yeah. theory, Renamak on the blue team should just be able to keep 40 kilometers away and just destroy Kester. And let's win the game. So they both have the same prop mods, range. don't they? Yeah, they have the same prop mods. But, well, it's moving it out faster. Uh, Kester's just turned his on now. That's the reload from Kester now, though. That 30 seconds on the clock where Kester cannot shoot well enough back. So that could be what Renrak needed to pull ahead. Pull ahead in this range, yeah. And this is the downside, so although the rapid lights do a lot more damage application, that reload time of 60 seconds, isn't it? Uh, 30 35, seconds. For, 35 for rapid lights. Uh, That's what then kills that, it. I'm feeling that Wellnrak's probably going to have to reload soon here, as obviously they only have about 25 rounds. Shoot. So the reload time on your heavy missiles is only 10 seconds, so it's oh, significantly Kester's shorter. It. However, has yeah. The reloads have come through. So we're not quite sure oh, why Renner Rack didn't oh. stay at range. Oh, looks like Red Team have got it, but it is a very close call there. Yeah. There we go. Red Team win. Yeah, Kester's rapid light heavy, rapid light missile launcher on the Caracals go through. So that means that the red team of Kester and John goes through to the next the next stage of the loser's bracket, and that means that Reston Wizard and Renanrak are out of the tournament. So well done to all teams, and Kester and John will see you back in the next match, and they will be fighting Safion and Xerox. Right, well, let's try this again. What do we do? Warping in at 100 is very risky as well because the arena is only 100 kilometers and you can land up to 5 kilometers away from where you plan to.
they've drastically changed their tactics and walked to zero this time. Condor landing well before their other ship. I'll help commentate in a minute once I finish this lovely pa um, pasta bake. <laughs> it looks like so Drafting Cursus has headed straight over to that arbitrator to try and lock it down while they send drones onto Valen's Condor. Draft them taking damage a lot of damage. Damage started to find very fast. Yeah. I believe that's the Warrior 2s of that arbitrator that are really, really good. And will eat you alive, as Drathas does found out. I'd like to remind everyone that is an armor tanked arbitrator, so it has no damage at all here. Yeah. Looks like Rico's changed tactics and started working on that condor, which is Three now minutes, pulling 30 range. seconds on the clock. So not much damage being applied to the red team by the blue, whereas quite a bit of damage is being applied to the blue team there. Vector Remember suddenly that in half vector, armor. Remember that Vector is structured tank, so it has very little shield and armor to speak of anyway. But yes, it, it is going to die very quickly now, as it has all the drones from that Arbitrator on it, which is a full flight of and hammerheads. Just... And I'm not seeing any damage being applied to the Red Team. No, I'm not seeing that at all either. I believe that his mm -hmm. drones were on the Condor for a bit, and the Condor drone was just outrunning them, leading them on a merry chase. Yeah, so he's now switched his drones to Castellan's Arbitrator for the Red Team. Uh, the Arbitrator has now started taking damage, but I think far too late. Yeah, a little too little too late now. I'm saying that. As that Vexer hits half hull. Yeah. That Vexer is going down relatively quickly compared to Castellan's Arbitrator, which is still sitting comfortably in half armor. However, if the Vexer can get the Arbitrator down, then it might then have a chance to kill that Condor and win the match. Yeah. But he's now yeah. hitting 33% of his hull left, and the Arbitrator's got quite a bit of HP left. Without being in range, he's in as well. I believe the Arbitrator has quite a bonus on drones compared to that Vexer. That Condor is this complete bonus. And, and there, there goes, goes the Vexer. Rico. Lawless Red team win, Red not team. losing a single ship. Is that our first match where a yeah, team's not lost? Is. That's not bad. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's our eighth match, and it's taken the eighth match before um, a team's oh. won without losing a single ship. Yeah, that Condor that's burning around, leading the drones on a merry chase. This is a tactic you often see in um, the Alliance tournament. Pretty advanced tactic, some might say. Yeah. That's not a patronizing, condescending thing for anyone. Just, it's a fairly advanced tactic. One thing I've not seen any of the teams do yet is shoot the drones. Yeah, Shooting the drones in the Alliance the tournament ship, is a... As the ships are so low HP, uh, you'd have to do about 25,000 or 2,700 damage to all the drones. Whereas that's and like, if I'm... what, a fifth of health of most of these ships? And if I'm not mistaken, both the Caracol and the Vexer both have bonuses to the HP of drones, don't they? Yeah. Well, the Arbitrator so does. I'm not sure about the Caracol. Um, uh, Caracol Vexer. being a missile based. <laughs> the Vexer, I mean. Yeah, Vexer and Arbitrator, I do believe, have bonus to HP of drones. Yeah, so congratulations to the Red Team. I'm going through towards um, Apparently, the is correct semi-finals. Apparently, saying... Draft and Rico did not lose a ship their first match. Um, however, let's correct Draft here and say that he did a boundary violation on that first match. <laughs> and so by by default he lost his um he lost his ship. <laughs> so yes, get wrecked. So, so yeah, so, so this is our first match without a boundary violation where both ships have won. Um so that is um Villain and Castellan through to the uh, semi finals, I guess as the brackets work. Uh, they will be fighting the winner of the next match, I think. Yep, which I Glad believe is me and Zaf, Xerox and Zaf, versus Kester and John. 
Right, welcome back again. This will be match 2-1-1 on the ladder there. This is on the blue team, Safion and Xerox versus the red team made up of Kester and John. We apologise somewhat for the stream, but we have technical difficulties where the commentator is not the person streaming, which makes all sorts of fun. And the person streaming is also the referee and organiser, so, you know. If you're not in Avalon, or even if you are in Avalon and you're not logged into the game, then you're bad and get on Jabber. But if you're not in Avalon, um, feel free to ask any questions in side chat you might have. Like, for example, are you recruiting? Or other fun questions. Or why are you all so bad? In which case, because we're having fun and that's what counts. Right, we've got four X's. So once again, five minutes on the clock. We haven't got Xerox commentating this time because Xerox is fighting. Right, blue team have warped in at 30 kilometers, whereas red team have warped in at zero. So the caracal on the red team straight away taking some damage there. The blue team's um, Tristan burning away, but getting the drones onto the ship. I know it's come back in now, a little bit of a flyby. Um, and the Tristan's gone for the blue team. He came in and he died pretty much instantly. Um, Kester's Caracal on the red team. Taking well, almost half shield. So don't forget this is a buffer shield tank here. It's on the half shield already. The blue team stabber there sitting on well, half shields now. The Tristan on the red team taking no damage whatsoever so far. He's keeping his range and staying out of it apart from his drone target. The stabber for the blue team into armor now. Caracal for the red team is lost three quarters of its shield. Shields are going down pretty fast, but that stabber, that stabber on the blue team is nearly gone. Once that's gone, that means the blue team's out. And blue team is gone. That was a very fast match. Minute and a half, if not even that. One minute, ten seconds, and blue team is out. Red team didn't lose a single ship there. So that means John and Kester go through to the next stage. John and Kester will be fighting Draff and Rico in the next match. And the winner of that match will go on to fight Villain and Castellan. So, yeah, that's that match over very fast and we'll be back hopefully pretty soon. We might have to quickly resupply some ships. Right, welcome back. We've got Xerox again joining us commentating. After right, this my match, defeat. Very fast defeat. What, two, three follies? <laughs> um, right, so this match is, sees Draft and Rico on the blue team versus the red team made up of Kester and John. Yeah, the winner Draft of this and match. Rico are in the. There's some Bexer again, and it's against. I've actually forgotten who we're against again. Oh, John Kester, and Kester John. which is a rapid like piece of bastardness. And <laughs> Tristan. <laughs> so the winner of this match will fight will fight Villain and Castellan in the semi finals. Really? I don't I've said It's the final the dash semi final. If yes. the losers win, then it goes on to another match. If the winners win, that's it. Game over. Yeah, so brackets are confusing. Yep. Right. Let's see what ranges these are coming at again this time. See if Draft and Rico break it. And again, five minutes on the clock. So we've got the red team at 50 clicks. And, and blue team, team at zero. Right, I've certainly got too many blues now. 
you have Wellnrak still on your overview, no doubt. Yeah. And he just got defied. That incurs is immediately taking a lot of damage. The power of rapid lights comes. Yeah, and Curses is dead. That's just so blue team. Blue team have lost their Incursus frigate before the red team have even taken any damage. Due to that range they're sitting at, that Caracal being able to fire those rapid lights at 70 kilometers, destroy frigates before the frigates even know what's hit them. Yeah. And that Vex, I... uh, Rico's Vex on the blue team. Oh. They're taking a lot of damage. You don't even have turn, time to turn your reps on against those rapid lights. The Caracal on the red team starting to take some damage, but it's not going to be enough. Don't forget this Vector is whole tanked, but I don't know. Remember, the Vector does have to, the Caracal will have to go for a reload attack soon, and now that the drones have hit that. Although, for some reason, he seems to only be using Hobgoblins on that Caracal. I don't quite understand why he's using white drones here. Maybe and just to get across the field due to the ranges? Oh, no, yeah, it's actually. Same. That Tristan is shooting the drones of Rico's Vexer. If you can see, the Acolytes are swarming that Hammerheads. The hammerheads here. And because of the ranges we've got going on here, if they can, if that Tristan can destroy the drones of um, Rico's Vexer, then the damage application from that Vexer, he's going to have to put out his light drones, which will be slightly harder to kill, but obviously doing significantly less damage. That Vexer starting Esther. to take some damage. Kester nearly bounding there, getting to 96 kilometers. Depending on what side of Effie's Valgate you're sitting. <laughs> yep. As you can see on the stream, we've got those drones locked, so we can see those Latin cursors just taking them out. The Vexer is into hull now, but that hull is not really moving, whereas the Caracal is now at half shields, but again, that's not moving very fast either, as those drones get picked off by the incursors. I believe that Car yeah, the Caracal is currently on a reload. Oh, there's the fire coming in now. So we should see so the that damage is starting to take some damage now. Yeah, you can see the damage landing now. That's going to start hurting. You know, it's not going to hurt tons, but at the same time, there's not much damage getting applied to that caracal. If that vexer can't get that caracal down, then then and we might actually go to time. With that vexer also having lost most of its drones, I think this match could be heading towards time. You are correct here. Yeah. 2 minutes and 13, or 1 minute left on the clock, rather. Vexer is starting to take a bit more damage again. Well, it seems like they've moved to the Tristan. Yeah, the Tristan is now taking the full brunt of this damage. He's possibly trying to equalize it, but Hester is shooting the drones of the, of the Vexer with his rapid light. Where he was. So that Vexer now only has Acolyte going around that Tristan now. I believe John is going to get back a bit of his armor now. Yep, there it is. But will it be too little too late? As those Acolytes are cursing him. So you say that Tristan's crazy ass tank there. Yeah, it is an ancillary repper though, so eight charges and it will then be a third of the amount we get after that. Assuming he's turned off auto reload. If he hasn't and that thing starts reloading, that's his rep gone for 60 seconds. Yeah, and that will spell his death, I would say. That Vexer now though, half hull and going down still. Yeah. Has he moved his acolytes onto the caracal now instead? No, no, it's still on that Tristan. And there goes the Tristan. And, the... and that Vexer is getting very, very low. He's probably... Yeah. The re... He's not going to have to reload, is he? He's got 30 I seconds to take it down, close. so... He's no, gone. There goes the Vexer. He's That's gone with about, what, 10 it. seconds left of the match? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that means the red team, Kester... Um... Kester and... Kester and John. Kester and John Kester and John to the semi-finals slash finals depending on who wins. Right, welcome back. Sorry about that long delay. Uh, less technical problems, more real life problems. Um, right, this is the possibly last match, depending on who wins. We have got on the red team 
Villain and Castellan versus the blue team made up of Kester and John. So it's going to be a Condor Arbitrator versus a Rapid Light Caracor and a Tristan. So it'll be an interesting match to see if they go after the drones again, because that Arbitrator does rely quite heavily on the drones. However, it does have two sets of mediums instead of the one of the Vexer. Just waiting for the teams to um, get into position and we'll be good to go. It is. Interesting to see if they try pull range with drone boats compared to these caracals. No is the answer to that question, not even slightly. So we've got all four people whopping in at. No, the caracal and Tristan are at 50, whereas Valen and Castellan have walked to zero and are immediately chasing straight after them. They're onto that. So, although Condor they walked already. in at 50 kilometers, that range has been closed very quickly. That Condor not taking terribly much damage considering what he's up against. Well, saying that, that said, he's now. <laughs> <laughs> that and said, he's dead. He's gone. So, for the red team, that leaves just the arbitrator against the lovely tanked um, Tristan and the crazy character. Oh, that arbitrary, that character is getting far away. 94 kilometers? He's gonna bounty violate fairly soon. I see him at 98 <laughs> clicks. 100? 101? That's a boundary, is it? Is it happy? Mr. Referee? So Kester <laughs> has done a boundary violation. And did John as well? And the Tristan, because I'm guessing the Tristan was probably anchoring on <laughs> yeah. the Caracal. And I'm sure Mr. Blappy Guns with his um, artillery can <laughs> probably blap them as a penalty. Just to put off a show. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that means that the blue team are both out because they both bind with violated. 100 clicks. Yeah, so Castellan means... <laughs> by default wins that match, I think. <laughs> yeah, so Castellan wins, um, purely based on boundary violations from both of the other team. We don't know that Kest that, that Arbitrator does do a lot of damage with its drones, so could have stood a chance, maybe? Yeah, I don't know, it's already half armour where that character was barely in shields. True. Yeah. Would you like to be broadcast that to the people, Effie? That they just failed. <laughs> Yeah, so probably should have actually told the teams that the boundary violated and the match was over instead of just commentating <laughs> yeah. on it. But hopefully they're all watching the stream anyway, because, you know, why not? Lots of intel on the stream. <laughs> Don't kill the, the arbitrator. <laughs> you could have so, solved that. Oh, never mind. <laughs> so now that that means that the red team are through, Villain and Castellan <laughs> are through with the red team, does that mean they win or...? Yeah, they win. They win overall now. They have won the game. So, red team of Villain and Castellan. So, Villain and Castellan win the entire tournament because of a boundary violation. <laughs> so, congratulations to those two. I believe yeah. that is that us done for the night. That is indeed. Go get my beauty sleep. <laughs> All right, anyway, so thank you everybody for watching and thanks to everybody for organising it and for the people taking part. Much appreciated. You know what I should have done? Sorry. I should have jammed them both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But to be fair, it's just a shame the Varga didn't have a longer lock range and we could have blacked them. <laughs> like what um, CCP used to do, old school style, before they had scripts to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so everybody, thank you for watching. Thank you to Effie for organising it. Thank you for Xerox for fitting up the ships and everything. Thank you for EVNT for coming up with a ton of fits we stole. Um, <laughs> and obviously... <laughs> and obviously thank you to all the participants for... Um, participating <laughs> and for all the other Avalon people who were watching on the stream and in corp chat and generally supporting
I hope everybody had fun. I hope everybody enjoyed watching. And we'll probably try and make some video out of this for people to watch later on. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Unless Alex has anything else to add? Nope, I think that's us done. Except Kester, All you're right. silly. <laughs> oh, as for prizes, um, or oh, Effie doesn't want to speak, but I'm going to let Effie go through the prizes because I can't remember what they are. Or he can. Oh yeah, so is that each per or split between the team? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> because Effie is putting up the cost of the prize himself, that means that the winning team of Villain and Castellan get a billion isk between them, so 500 million isk each. Not a bad prize. Um, the corporation, Avalon Project, has paid for all of the ships, I think, I hope so, possibly. Depends if we can yeah, afford a Alliance Bear next month. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we, we don't have tons of money to help out because we gave it all to charity with the Plex for Good from Nepal. We raised over, oh, what did we get? I think we got close to $300. I thought it was 220 or was that? I think £220. Pounds. I think it was £220 pounds. or something. So, yeah. so anyway, but that meant that we cleared out a lot of the corpse extra cash to um, donate for charity, which I'd say is probably worth it more than, you know, internet spaceships. So that's why the corp's a bit poor, but we still spent billions of um, ISK on fitting out all these ships for everybody. So the participants just had to come along and pick a ship and off they flew. So it's yeah, sponsored by Avalon Project and the prize is sponsored by um, Effie. So yeah, so congratulations to the winning team and congratulations to everybody for generally taking part. And um, we'll catch you next time. See you guys later. <laughs>